In our second conversation, Professor Becker addresses the relationship between law and economics. As society seeks a balance between the cost of deterrence, enforcement, and punishment, and tries to reconcile these needs with its finite resources, Gary Becker has worked to place the study of crime and punishment within an economic framework. The conversation also turns to the subject of interest groups and how economics can help us understand their role and influence in the political process. Professor Becker is joined in this conversation by Judge Richard A. Posner. Judge Posner serves on the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Seventh Circuit and is a senior lecturer in law at the University of Chicago Law School. So, Gary, um, you know, um, law has, has changed a great deal in the last 40 years. Uh, much more emphasis on economics, particularly in um, scholarship, but, you know, also in, in the courts and in Congress, administrative agencies. So, how, how do you see this development, and, and what role have you played in it? Well, I think I played a really small role in that. I, I think you play the major role in it. I think the development ha is a healthy development. A lot of the legal issues dealt with uh, are issues that uh, are economic issues in a broad meaning of the term economic, whether it's torts or divorce law or criminal law. Uh, these involve the use of resources. And I think prior to the introduction of economics into this area, uh, the legal scholars and judges didn't have a framework, under a powerful framework, under which they could bring to bear an analytical apparatus to discuss problems other than just, you know, following precedent to try to understand the sources of precedent and, in new cases, uh, the type of reasoning that would be relevant to uh, where the president wasn't such a clear guide. So I, I think economics provides that, as it does in a lot of other areas. In the area of crime, where, where you know, I, I've worked, where maybe I had a, a little bit of a contribution, there it, it seems it's been, it was a natural area to provide uh, a, a framework in which uh, the criminal was more rational. They were making calculations, uh, or at least acting as if they made calculations of whether this was a good activity to be a thief or a robber as opposed to going into some legal activity or a drug dealer. And the society had to respond to that. And well, I assumed in my own analysis, society responds uh, irrationally. So I tried to work out some criteria for what would be rational response to so by society, taking account of the fact that criminals are affected by deterrence. So criminals are less likely to go into crime if they're punished or if they're caught and, and then punished. But they're also less likely to go into crime if legal opportunities open up, if their education is better, if jobs are more available. So people have, have a misunderstanding that the economic approach to crime is, uh, is hard. It's just law and order, punishment, and so on. It's that, and that's not unimportant. I think it's quite important, but it's also says that crime is affected by whether we provide good education for potential criminals, whether we make the opportunities available to them in a legal market so attractive that given whatever law and order we have, they don't want to enter into crime. And I think the e economic framework uh, is an excellent framework for that. And I think despite all the criticisms, it, it has overwhelming dominance now both implicitly in what people, uh, judges and others, did in the past, but certainly explicitly now in a lot of the analysis. No, I've heard you say that you think uh, economic analysis of law, you said this a few years ago, had um, maybe plateaued or, or um, could, could what, what, what do you mean exactly? By yeah, that? what I meant by that. And, I, and uh, I think I remember saying also, this is not unique to law. I think this happened in labor economics, happens in, in, in all fields uh, that I'm familiar with, that when a field gets created, it's, there's enormous excitement in the field because a lot of new ideas are being introduced. It happened certainly in law. I mean, it revolutionized the field. It happened in labor economics, enormous change in, in the field. So new theories come in and some fields 
uh, like uh, labor, a lot of empirical work comes in, the theory interacts with the empirical work, and it moves ahead maybe for decades. And that's what happened in law, I think, in law and economics. But after a while, what happens in, uh, in all fields is that this initial burst, maybe reinforced by a se subsequent burst, is reach, begins to reach a, kind of a plateau because uh, the, the new ideas have been worked out and nobody has come along with a, a corresponding new idea. So there's, all, there's, a, there's a period, of, sometimes a long period in each field, of a mopping, what I call a mopping up operation. Uh, so if you look at the crime area, well, people say, well, let's take this variation on the punishment system. And let's introduce this form of heterogeneity. And I can name names, but I won't name names of people who who've make, make a living of it. That's okay. It's not unuseful activity, but it, you know, it's not going to lead to any dramatic, really, uh, changes in it. Uh, and I think that's happened in, in the field of law and economics. It certainly happened in the field of crime, in the criminal side of law. And, and to the extent I'm familiar with other fields, my impressions happened there, too. Now, sometimes, you, the, the, it happens in every field. Sometimes it's happened in physics, people say, in, in small particle physics. Sometimes it's delayed because the theory leads to empirical work. The empirical work brings up new regularities, and that pushes, uh, stimulates the theory. I, had, uh, I made the claim then, maybe wrong, that one of the problems in law and economics is too many, particularly the economists who worked in that field, were pure theorists. They didn't uh, link it up closely enough to the data. And the data could be court cases. I, I don't mean, you know, the sort of regression stuff that economists will do in labor. It could be a variety of forms of data. And that when you, when you link a theory to the data, you make the theory, you make the field much more robust. You delay this period of transition. I think one of the problems I've thought in the law and economics field is aside from you and, and Bill Landis and a few other people, a, 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 a larger fraction of people went into that field compared to, say, in labor economics were theorists. And I think uh, it, when you get theorists talking to other theorists, uh, that's the beginning of sterility for a field until you mm -hmm. get uh, somebody who comes along and links it to some observations. 